Tomorrow, you have to start looking uh, at the Amazons of the world, right? Sitting at the bottom of the channel. Tomorrow, you have to start looking at the Netflix of the world. Held the 50-day moving average, right? Look what happened to Tesla. And maybe it won't happen tomorrow, but look what happened to Tesla. It has hit the 50-day moving average bounce. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So let's talk about the market today. Um, on the surface, you're not gonna feel anything, right? The market, there is no, is the market in turmoil coming up on CNBC because the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 27 points. Uh, unfortunately, the Dow Jones is pretty kind of irrelevant. It really is, it's only 30 stocks. It's retail uh, water cooler talk, and it really doesn't make a difference. If you are uh, an active participant in the market, and we talk about this all the time, it's the NASDAQ composite, the, the Russell, uh, and the SPX. And the, the, big, the big conversation going over the weekend, if you watched uh, the weekend update or any video from last week, we, we were in distribution, right? And again, without going into what distribution is, make a long story short, the buyers and sellers of this market were going through kind of a, a fight in a phone booth, right? They were trying to see who is in control of the market, uh, just because if you looked at what happened the last three, four days of last week, you, you saw very, very smaller contracting channels. So we knew that. So we knew uh, contraction usually lasts for about uh, four to five days. So we knew any type of um, event or any type of futures overnight cash action was gonna give us a bigger clue. Now again, it doesn't make a difference if contraction ends on the upside or the downside, it just wants to end, it needs to end. And when you look at today's action and you see the final numbers today uh, on the NASDAQ composite down 2.5% of the day, can anybody be really surprised that this actually happened? We've been, we've been talking about now for weeks beta has not participated okay we're, we're looking at channels for the you know for, for such a long duration we've been talking about uh netflix hasn't done anything since earnings we've been talking about apple hasn't done anything since earnings earnings facebook on and on and on and what we saw today was kind of a result of what the data has been telling us now for a very very long time and that was well sales technology SPACs is still very very strong but you have to pay attention to the overall market if buyers start really accepting that the market has gone on a big run and now they're tired, looking for clues of buyers getting tired. And one of the clues came in a very, very weird, um, very, very weird situation today. Now, usually this has nothing to do with anything that I trade, right? But this little stock I saw this morning and they came out with a PR and the PR was something like blah, 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 spec, right? That's all I remember. And usually a, a PR like that and the word spec in this type of environment two, three weeks ago, the stock would have probably went up 200,000% and everybody would have chased it in sight. The difference between what happened two weeks ago, what happened today was, this was a perfect example of a buyer strike. People just got tired. They didn't want to chase the prices anymore. And the stock literally went from two, almost $3 pre-market, all the way back down to the 168 level. We, we also knew, and kind of going back into the realm of what we've been kind of covering for a very, very long time, we also knew what happened or know what happened when a stock loses its range, a macro range. And for the most part, many stocks for the last you know three four months despite how weak the amazons of the world was and the facebook's uh and the boeing's and you know everything in between we knew that most stocks were still above their ranges but tesla gave a, a, a really example of how structural um ranges work and what happens when these ranges finally lose and, and if you've been watching this uh broadcast for the last three weeks you know how important that 800 level was you know how important uh that 780 level was we actually even knew how important uh this 762 was because that was the low from four days ago on the rising 50 day support and when you look at a lot of charts and how they're kind of setting up going into tomorrow you'll see a lot of similarities of how Tesla's starting up. And again, you don't need to take a lot of 
work tonight. You can just go through literally the NASDAQ 100, uh, just, just names that are just sitting there, tested their bottom of the range support here. And if it takes one more day to confirm, again, nobody's saying the Tesla is going to turn into a Tesla situation, but the, the market is very, very aggressive right now. And when you look at what happens when channels start to get aggressive, they get hit very, 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 very aggressively, right? That's the moral of the story. And we'll get to the uh, pivots in a second. And tomorrow you have to start looking uh, at the Amazons of the world, right? Sitting at the bottom of the channel. Tomorrow you have to start looking at the Netflix of the world. Held the 50 day moving average, right? Look what happened to Tesla. And maybe it won't happen tomorrow, but look what happened to Tesla. It has hit the 50 day moving average bounce. And look what happens when it confirmed the 50 day moving average. So look at Amazon, right? Look at Amazon, first close below the 50. If this thing gets confirmed, look how much room it has down. Look at Netflix, right? It stopped right on the 50 day moving average. This 50 day moving average gets confirmed tomorrow. It has a lot of room down. Look at Facebook, right? Same thing. Facebook touched right on support. If this support gets confirmed tomorrow, look how much room you have down and so forth and so on and so on. And the most important part was if you've been doing your homework and, and, and actively researching the market and researching names, you'll notice this wasn't a shock. Yes, maybe it was a, a shock that the NASDAQ composite went down 350 points today. But you could see this brewing every single day and seeing that these stocks just didn't participate for the last two, three months. We've been talking about like literally one beta trade, maybe a day, maybe you know two, maybe three throughout the week. They've been picking their spots. Of course, they've been having really, really good runs with the Zooms of the world and the videos of the world and so forth and so on. But you know the disconnect between beta, large cap, mega cap stocks from the rest of the market. And once we started seeing cracks in small cap names that they just wouldn't run up today, right, on PRs, whatever the case may be, we started getting a lot more clues and so far and slowly but surely, you started seeing a lot of ranges get absolutely hit today. And tomorrow is setting up into be a really, really big potential uh, premium day, especially in beta land, but a lot of names as well. Of course, nobody's, nobody is talking about mass destruction. This market is going to zero. We're not about that. It's, it's, it's not about fear mongering. It's about looking at these setups, looking at where the market is. Now, macro wise, we've been talking about this 305 level for a very, very long time. Once 305 goes out, we know that this market has changed sentiment and changed sentiment very, very aggressively. But for this market to get or at least start to get more aggressive than a kind of a one day event. If today's action gets confirmed, then you have that move kind of mirroring what we saw and what we're seeing right now in an Amazon, in a Netflix, in a Facebook of the world. On Apple today, they got uh, hit pretty, pretty aggressively at the open. You could get a test into the 50 day moving average. And, and unfortunately, a lot of new, new traders and investors you know, they don't believe in this. They, know, they don't believe in gravity. And they say, well, this is, this is exactly like everything has been happening for the last four and a half years. Every dip gets bought. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. We don't know that. We're, again, we're not trying to guess and we're not trying to scare anybody. All we're talking about is rational behavior, right? Looking at the market from an objective point of view, not from the bull side, not from the bear side, but from an opportunistic side and just making sure you are prepared. So if you are an investor and these levels start cracking, maybe the bulls do come, but what happens if it doesn't? You have to have kind of a plan A, plan B, plan D and plan Z, because if you are all about wishful thinking, then just ask all the folks back during the dot-com craze, what happened on every single bounce? Eventually the bounces stopped uh, the bears took over, yada, 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 a big revolving door. So, of course, I'm not trying to put uh, any fear to anybody. Just respect the levels, right? Respect these levels. Today, if this range loses tomorrow, we go down to 317. Again, stocks go from supply to supply, and they go from demand to demand to demand. So any close, and for all you guys who are uh, have exposure, have an inventory, basically positions, right, swing traders, any close uh, on the queues below 317, that's not good, okay? So that's not good. So if, if you've uh, completely, you know, just put your blinders on from the 328 level, uh, and again, you know this 305 level is gonna be very, very important, just put that 317, put it on a sticky pad, put it in front of you. Any close below 317 macro-wise on the queues will start a very, very aggressive cycle. And this is just not an opinion. This is exactly what happens when sellers clean up buyers while stocks go lower. And hopefully, if you are a shareholder in a lot of these names, 
uh, hopefully you will recognize this, you know, recognize this, um, the warning signs. And if it does happen, you kind of start uh, making necessary steps to kind of protect uh, your portfolio. So, you know, tomorrow there's a lot of value uh, on deck. Obviously, I'm watching Amazon, I'm watching Netflix, I'm watching Facebook. Uh, look, you know, look at some of the pivots today. Uh, incredibly strong. Uh, Akamai, which is surprising that Akamai didn't completely, completely get annihilated, considering uh, how much, how how good the macro consolidation was to the downside. Uh, 98, 30, 98. If it builds below, can start its next leg down. I'm very surprised it didn't get smashed. Uh, only went up, only went down about a buck. So here's the whole 98, 98, 30. We covered this thing on the weekend update. Only went down to 97. Very surprised. Surprise, but if they start taking down that 97, I do believe uh, it still gets to that 95 area. Uh, some of you guys I know scalped this yell, uh, seven dollars needs to build, only a small move. It, it, there's not going to be a lot of violence, okay? There, there really is not going to be a lot of violence uh, to the upside, especially if there's a macro buyer strike. So here is the seven, only went up about 20 cents before it reversed. Uh, BTWN, uh, I still like this thing. Keep an eye on this thing. Uh, starts building that $18 level. I still like it. Um, I caught a piece of this trade. Uh, PSHC, uh, 18 needs to build. Uh, it went to 1870s. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, caught it for a little bit. Uh, two weeks ago, they, I, I still like this thing. If they start confirming this thing macro over 19, I think it does go. But here is the pivot right here. Here is the 18, right? This whole channel here. Two candles in a row. This is where I was talking about the sneaky area. 18. It got above the 18, traded all the way up into the 1870s. I still like that 19 area. Uh, Apple got smashed. Uh, 127.30, 127. If it builds below, it can flush. I thought it had a ch chance to get to 124. And they started coming in with some really aggressive weekly 124 put buyers. And this is a perfect example of the options market dictating what potentially could happen next. So here is Apple. Uh, they took down this 127 area, 127.40, 127, and got it down to the 25.60. I still think it gets into the 24s uh, tomorrow, especially if the market confirms. Uh, obviously, MXIM you know, had came nowhere close to, uh, to, to breaking out above 98.50. Uh, NIO is pretty good. Uh, I caught a piece of this as well. Uh, 52.50 if it builds below can flush. Here's another example. A buyer came in with short-term uh, $44 puts. I said there's a shot it could get down to the 50-60 level. Da, 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 da. Stock went to right to 50-40. So here's the 52.50 area that it broke down. And if this thing confirms tomorrow, I still like it lower. Right, folks? Again, stocks go from demand to demand to demand. So if, if this starts losing today's range, there's a lot of room down there as well. Uh, Apple again got smoked. Uh, Neo, here comes new lows. 50, 60 next stop went to 50, 40. Here's how to be the weirdest move of the day. And when I put the pivot in, um, I was joking around. I said, look, 630 if it reclaims the 10 day moving average. No, I have not been drinking, right? Not been drinking, allegedly. So here's another perfect example of the options market dictating exactly what potentially could happen next if macro gets confirmed. And this was just the, one of the highlighted buyers that came in, but we started watching buyer after buyer after buyer of the March 19 expiration $10 calls. And they just weren't coming in for, you know, $13,000 premium, 10, they were coming in for hundreds of thousands of dollars, one after another and after another. And here's a perfect example that again, market is driven by the option flow, but here's also another example that somebody knows somebody, something, everybody knows something, right? Somebody out there knows something that potentially could come out. So here's the 625, 630 level. And as soon as it, as soon as it, it started building above that 630, you had a PR come out that New York uh, Governor Cuomo, and I think also New Jersey as well, uh, they were allowing movie theaters uh, to open up again. Obviously, this is a big deal for the movie industry, AMC uh, and IMAX. And this thing from the 630 just absolutely exploded and went to the six, seven twenties level. I still think this probably gets into the seven sixties for tomorrow. Uh, if, if you are stuck uh, in this trade, you know, obviously higher levels, 13, 14, $15. Uh, and, you know, seven sixty is a viable area to possibly make a sale and kind of, you know, re uh, examine your position. If you are long a runner uh, overnight, that is obviously uh, your first supply. And it kind of 
fat kind of factors in for tomorrow. You know, maybe GameStop wakes up. Now again, it's not really the same thing as AMC. AMC, at least you understand why reopening of the movie theaters is a big deal. So I don't think it's a play, but here's kind of the same little challenge. And, and, and again, it's not really on watch tomorrow. Like nobody should turn around and say, no, man, I love it. I think it's going, no, 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 no. I'm not saying this, we should watch this thing, but you know, kind of in the corner of our eye, let's keep an eye on it. If it could reclaim maybe the 10 day moving average, maybe this thing wakes up as well. So, you know, uh, look, there's a lot of value in this market right now. Distribution is over. Distribution did not mean the bulls were going to regain control. All distribution was meant was the buyers and the sellers. One got cleaned up. It wasn't it wasn't the sellers. The buyers got cleaned up and the expansion channels started forming to the downside. Uh, please watch the levels tomorrow. If we start confirming today's prices, there is going to be uh, more selling. We'll see. We'll see. We have to be prepared uh, for everything. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I will see everybody tomorrow. Take care.